when you watch the breath. An important part of the meditation is what you're talking to yourself about and how you talk to yourself. If the mind slips off and you start telling yourself that you're discouraged, that's not helpful. If it slips off, you can tell yourself, well, now it's time to get back and just get back. Try to do it with as little drama as possible. But you find that the way you talk to yourself inside is often very strongly affected by the way you talk to yourself outside. So this is one of the reasons why when the Buddha is teaching the path, right speech actually comes before any of the meditation. Because as John Fuang once said, if you can't control your mouth, there's no way you're going to control your mind. So think about that as you go through the day. How does your speech have an impact on your own mind? How does it impact on other people? Because all too often we just blurt out whatever comes to mind and then have to think about it later. Again, as John Fuang said, it's better to think about things before you say them than have to think about them after. And when you're thinking about them after, it's usually because you said something you regret. So give some thought beforehand. And the Buddhist test is three things. One, is it true? Two, is it beneficial? And then three, is this the right time and place? And particularly for, with words that are going to be hurtful or unpleasant. You don't say them unless you really have to. And even then, you have to say them in the best circumstances, i.e. find a time when the other person is willing to listen, preferably one-on-one. -on -one. And try to present your case in as unconfrontational way as possible. Of course, there are times when pleasant words are not the right thing to say. But it's the unpleasant ones that set things on fire. So you have to be especially careful about those. And then as you find that you're applying this test to your words outside, you start applying them to the words inside your mind. Again, when you're talking to yourself and you're getting discouraged in the meditation, ask yourself, is this true? And part of the mind, of course, will say, yes, it's true. And it'll go on and on and on about your faults. But then you could say, well, is it beneficial? And no, it's not beneficial. You've got to focus on the things that give you encouragement in the path. You think about the Buddha. All those years he was practicing, he had no encouragement from anybody. He had those five brethren, and that was it. And then even they left him. No encouragement at all. And yet that was when he found awakening. So where did he get his encouragement? He got it from inside. Learned how to kept keep picking himself up, giving himself, I guess you could say, pep talks. But he said he never let up on his desire to do and say and think what was skillful and define what was skillful. So that kind of thinking is useful. And take him as an example. You could say at that point, right before his awakening, the whole world was against him. And he, still he was able to come out winning. So learn to talk to yourself in ways that are beneficial and at the right time. There are times when you do have to be strict with yourself and maybe a little harsh. But when you've had practice with your speech in terms of your words with other people as to when and where and how you say things that are unpleasant, then you can start applying those, those same principles to yourself. And that way your inner speech becomes a part of the meditation, directed thought and evaluation. Gets you to settle down. So remember how important right speech is in terms of right mindfulness, right effort, and right concentration. They're all connected.